When getting started with your GetResponse account, there's a few areas that you should know about to help you get started in the best way. And so we're going to be starting out in our dashboard. And so with your dashboard, it's going to really be able to help you uh, navigate around the different uh, areas of the account and also set up your custom kind of at a glance views for the statistics and results that you'd like to see every time whenever you log in or you come back to your dashboard. And so the way you navigate around the account is through this uh, navigation bar or menu bar. We call it a nav bar sometimes. And so that's where you're going to be able to move around to different areas of the account. And you can see from this drop down menu, uh, these different uh, tools are going to be organized by communication tools. So how you're actually reaching out and connecting with your subscribers and then also growth tools. So how you can continue to you know, grow your email list and continue to grow your business. And then you'll see some other areas like where you can set up stores and products. So the uh, products that you'd like to be sell to be selling and promoting to your customers, you can actually be uh, you know, managing those here. Of course, integrations are very important. This is where you'll see all the integrations that are available and you can set those up. And your files and images is where you'll be able to uh, manage all of the, uh, you know, as it says, images and files and files that you want to be sharing uh, with your subscribers, you know, whether it's on your landing pages or your emails. And you'll also have access to, you know, free uh, Shutterstock images here as well. So that's what you're going to see from this menu. And then on the top here, you'll see additional options for quick access to really important areas of your account, like your email lists, your statistics and reporting data, the message drafts you're working on, and then always a quick actions, kind of, you know, a quick drop down so you can easily create, uh, you know, your newsletters, landing pages, forms or autoresponders at any time. And this menu bar follows you around when you're moving ar around the account. So whenever you're, you know, deep within some other area, you'll still be able to quickly get uh, to, you know, other really important areas of your account. And moving along, you're going to see this menu where you can just easily access your, uh, you know, help materials to contact customer supports with an email or live chat, your previous tickets or the help center, as well with uh, other educational uh, opportunities you have, like, you know, our free list building program, a marketplace where you can see people uh, promoting their services to help you out with your online marketing or a marketing toolkit to get discounts for uh, services that you may use in addition to get response. And finally is your account menu, where you'll be able to, of course, you know, be able to access affiliate programs, the refer a friend program, the uh, users. So the number of people on your team who could get access to your GetResponse account, your billing details. And finally, the manage account is very important. This is where you can add and manage your from field email addresses that you use in your email marketing or your domains, uh, your GDPR fields, things like that. And of course, your uh, general account details. So this is indeed a very important aspect of your account. Quickly going back to the dashboard, these widgets, like I mentioned previously, are simply where you can get and configure them to see the most important information at a glance, kind of your command center for what's going on with your online marketing. You can edit any widget that you have by hovering and choosing this uh, edit icon here to uh, manage the settings associated with this widget. You can also, of course, at that same settings, remove the widget if you no longer want it on your dashboard. And you can add new widgets from the widget library from this button as well. So you can scroll and see the list of available widgets you have. So these really help you see, you know, how your last newsletter did, uh, you know, landing page statistics. In addition, there's a quick actions widget as well that gives you uh, the option to customize uh, what you'd like to um, have here to easily and quickly create that particular asset as well. So this is going to be the way that you're going to be working in your dashboard. Now, another important place to uh, use when you're first getting started is the lists area. This is where you can uh, most easily access all of your contacts, your subscribers. And this is where you'll be creating and editing any of your lists. So lists, of course, being like uh, email lists and where you're actually organizing uh, all of kind of, you know, like minded or uh, things related to a particular marketing project, bank, brand or business. You know, for example, you know, I've got one for my business consulting uh, materials, let's say. So all of my um marketing that I do related to my business consulting business, I'd be doing it within this particular list and people who sign up for my, you know, consulting mailing list is this is where they would be added. So you can create a new list right here or add context to your account in a particular list with these buttons. Any existing lists that you have, when you hover over these icons here, you'll see additional action items that you have for what you can do within this list. Now you also have this additional kind of sub menu, we could say, for more areas of the list section uh, within your account. Of particular interest most likely would be the search. 
This is how you can actually search for your contacts. You can quick search them by typing in their name or email address. And of course, you can also do advanced searches where you have more search criteria by searching by specific lists, autoresponder settings, or subscription time. And then if you click add condition, you see many, many new uh, search terms that you have for contact details. You can search by those. You can search by particular contact actions or inactions. These are very handy as well. And then additionally, you know, geolocation, any scores and tags, uh, e-commerce data that you have, or auto funnel data. And of course, you can also uh, be stacking the search conditions as well. So if we can, you know, be searching for some specific, you know, custom field data that, you know, age is, is assigned. So people I have an age for, and then just pretend I actually have uh, people with age data. And then I could add another condition, you know, contact details, actually contact geolocation, you know, country is United States, let's say. So let's just say I've got some contacts who I have agent, an age for and they're located in the United States. Maybe I would want to contact them for some specific reason or have them saved in a group. I could then actually save them as a segment. So age United States. And now I'll have them available as a segment, which you can actually access right here. So all the segments you have, these groups of specific uh, contacts who meet some particular search criteria, you'll be able to find them within the segments area of your account. You can, of course, edit them as well uh, by hovering over this action item. You can view your statistics related to contact data, list hygiene, uh, and custom fields. So this is where you can create uh, data fields that you would like to usually have your uh, subscribers provide whenever they're signing up. So what type of data you'd like to uh, gather from them when they're signing up, you could do within custom fields. And so this is the most important part, I would say, to get started with establishing your contact list. If you already have an email list, uh, you know, let's say on a file on your account or in some other way, you can add contacts. You'll do that right here and you can choose to which list they should be added to, if they should be added to an autoresponder cycle, and then how you want to add them. Just, you know, start typing them in or you can upload a file from your computer connect a service. So one of the, uh, if you have your contacts with one of these services, you can integrate with them here. You can copy and paste from the file or you can migrate uh, from a list source that you have. So if you previously had your list with one of these services, you can go ahead and migrate it over as well. So this is the good way to get started to actually create the list that you want in your account, then go ahead and add your existing contact database to them. This is a definitely a very good place to get started and you know, uploading your file or doing an integration connection. From here, we could also then take a quick look at the auto funnel tool. It's a great place to get started uh, with your account, regardless of you know what uh, level you're at uh, within your online marketing or your business. Because we've gone ahead and learned about our you know list and got our contacts established, but now you need to kind of start thinking about how you're actually going to be you know communicating with them or what your goal is. For example, if you're not selling online just yet, but you really want to grow your audience, you could be uh, using a you know kind of list building communication funnel, which is basically putting the most important aspects of getting started with online marketing together for you, which is getting email addresses and then sending them you know nurturing emails. But if you're selling online and you're wanting to start selling eBooks or T-shirts or drones or whatever it is that you're looking to sell, you could create a sales funnel that's really going to optimize this process for you. And additionally, you could be uh, promoting webinars as well uh, within a funnel. So this is a good place to start. For example, I can just do, um, you know, this is my new signups funnel. This is an example. And we can create a funnel. This is essentially just putting things together for you in a visual way so you can easily see how to actually, uh, you know, visualize a process that uh, new signups will go through whenever they join your email list. So you could create a signup page called a landing page and then uh, automatically send them an email. So these are things, for example, if you navigate back to the menu, you know, you see entry points for landing pages and autoresponders, but with AutoFunnel, it puts them together for you. Of course, you can use them independently, but the beauty of AutoFunnel is it actually puts it all together for you so you can visualize it. You don't have to make these uh, connections uh, outside, um, you know, of the particular tool if you don't want to. And if you are actually selling online already or you've got a product that you're ready to sell, we could show you quickly what that looks like. So let's say that uh, you're maybe a fitness instructor and you're actually selling an online course. 
Uh, so you'd actually like to be able to uh, get some new signups with maybe a free, you know, workout guide. But then eventually you actually, your end goal is to sell and promote an online course that people purchase. So that's where what we call a sales funnel comes into play. So this is what it looks like when it's been completed. So it leads you through a process of creating a landing page. You can kind of see a quick example here of what I've done um, to be able to uh, get new signups to, uh, you know, leave their email address and get kind of a freebie, a free guide. But then, so they would provide their email address and be able to be added as a contact now on your list. Then you would automatically send them a message just saying, hey, thanks for signing up, here's your freebie. And then maybe you'd be saying, you know, are you actually interested now in purchasing my product? And that would be automatically added into the uh, message that you're sending because I'll show you that in just a moment, how you can set up your products. And then if they click that link, they could be going to another landing page that you've set up that promotes your, you know, your bootcamp course. I was testing it out, so that's why it says zero. Of course, we'd be charging, you know, a nice amount of money for this good 30-day bootcamp. And so when they click this, they could automatically go to an order form that you configure and customize so that they can be purchase, purchasing this order form or this uh, course straight from your order form and then being shown as actual, you know, 15 orders have been made. You know, we've got 15 successful purchases. And of course, this would be having, you know, more money showing. But just for my test purposes, I left it as zero dollars. So you're going to be able to see quick at a, res at a glance results of actually how you're, um, you know, how you're performing uh, within, you know, your goal of actually selling your bootcamp course. So that's a good option as well for sales funnel. So I want to bring your attention to those two things. And if you are ready to start selling, you know, while we're on this topic, I can bring you to the stores and products area. And so if you're ready to start selling online, if you already have an uh, account with one of these e-commerce platforms, you can easily integrate them uh, with your GetResponse account and automatically populate your GetResponse account with these uh, the products you have here. So you can start promoting and selling them uh, within your, you know, sales funnel marketing assets that you create in GetResponse. Or if you don't have one yet, that's not a problem at all. You can just create a GetResponse store now and start uploading your eBooks or PDFs or checklists or courses or whatever it is you're looking to sell a you know luxury vacation getaway and actually start selling and promoting that and processing the payments within GetResponse. So we can call it like vacation getaways, let's say. You choose create and then you just add a product. And so you can see um, some options for uh, explaining what you're selling. And there's lots of you know ways to go about thinking about your product. A product is again anything that you sell, and so you'd be able to make your decision here, and then go ahead and uh, complete the uh, required fields here, and then you'll be able to have your actual products stored in your account. I can show you one here. For example, this would be a downloadable file product being sold for fifty dollars, like an ebook, and so it looks like this. And then it's going to be automatically available for people to download this ebook after they purchase from within my sales funnel. And so this is going to be a really handy and hopefully you'll, you guys will try this out quickly when you get started. Uh, as you can see here, this is, you know, a quick example of someone, you know, getting a freebie. Uh, but then this is that product that I showed you right here with on a get response page. So definitely sales funnels are a great way to help you really start seeing the correlation between your online marketing activities and the revenue that you're bringing into your business. And now this is going to be kind of bringing into play the landing pages area of your account, as well as autoresponders and email marketing. But email marketing, if you go here, this is where, for example, you can be sending your newsletters uh, to your customers. Let's say you've got this list and maybe you just want to, you know, send an update or a, you know, kind of some type of announcement uh, to a list or all of the contacts in your account. That would be where you're creating a newsletter. That's also what you do right here as well from this create button. So it's totally up to you how you uh, go about that. You can choose create newsletter and you go through the email creation process. It's very straightforward to be able to, you know, choose which list this message is associated with. Give it a, you know, an internal name for yourself. You know, we've got big news for your subject line and then choosing your from fields as well. Going to the next step, you'll choose your template or the message that you'd like to send or you can, of course, start from scratch. And then you just customize the uh, template, you know, with your own text, with your own images, uh, you know, changing the colors. You'll see the basic blocks here for easy drag and drop for uh, adding additional content elements to this message. And by hovering and clicking on different areas of this message within the editor, you'll see the editing, option that, uh, editing options that you have. 
send yourself a test message, all of that before you get ready to go live. You can go to the next step. And as well, whenever you're first choosing your message, you can set to uh, run an A-B test as well. I didn't click that because uh, we've got a lot of things that we're looking at right now, but you can also set up an A-B test for your messages and test subject lines, content, uh, from fields, things like that. You'll just choose uh, which list should receive this message or if any uh, particular recipient should be excluded from receiving it. And we'll go to the next step. And then you can choose if you want to send this message immediately. You can schedule it uh, for a specific uh, date and time. You can enable perfect timing where we use uh, you know, data from your subscribers and see when they're most actively opening and clicking your messages. And we'll automatically deliver it um, you know, for each unique subscriber at that time or for time travel to send it at a, a recipient's local time. So these are all some good options that you have for choosing how you want to schedule your messages and, or actually send them. That's an important part to get familiar with is with sending your newsletters. And I'll just also show you briefly about your autoresponders. So autoresponders are of course a part of online of email marketing, but we've set them out here because a lot of people like to be able to access them independently. And you can view them within a calendar view, let's say, like a subscription calendar, so to speak. And so this is specific, for example, to uh, automated messages that are sent uh, based when someone signs up to join your email list. And so day zero is the same day that someone signs up or, you know, then day two is two days after that and so on. And so you can create an automated email series of messages that will go out when someone signs up. But remember, if you're using uh, AutoFunnel to actually capture people who, when they sign up, you can also be setting up these uh, autoresponders within the AutoFunnel. So it's just totally up to you on in which terms uh, you choose to use each tool. You can create a new autoresponder for a particular list and day of the cycle right here as well. And then the editing options are exactly the same as you saw for your newsletters. Landing pages are another important aspect of your account. Again, if you're using AutoFunnel, that's what you're gonna be using for your sign-up pages and your sales and order form pages and post-purchase pages. But you can also create an independent landing page outside of the funnel if you'd like. And so very similar to the messages, you've got templates you can choose from that you'd like to customize or start from scratch. And then whenever you access the uh, landing pages, this is just internal for us you'll see very similar drag and drop functionalities on the right side, your content editing blocks, and then by hovering and clicking over the different areas of this landing page, you can actually edit that. Change the form fields or edit them for the form that's on the page when people actually sign up. You can edit the thank you page, so what people see after they submit the form on the landing page. And you can also customize the mobile version of this landing page. So you can kind of tweak the uh, desktop version uh, and maybe, you know, hide some elements that wouldn't necessarily be, uh, you know, showing up perfectly on mobile, really big images, for example. And you can just hide them from the mobile version and keep the most important aspects of it uh, visible. You can go to the next step and you'll see how you can edit the settings uh, of your landing page. So add your uh, SEO settings, so your page meta title and description, and then your URL settings. If you have your own website domain, you can assign it to this uh, landing page with its own subdomain or directory. And you can also just use one of the get response provided subdomains uh, to be able to uh, get your page up in no time with the uh, particular uh, information that you want here, like, you know, free ebook signups or whatever it is about your business and get response can host the page or assign your own domain right here as well. And you can see some help settings for that. You can use a sign up form. So sign up forms are what you would put on your website to be able to get additional, you know, signups uh, on different, you know, on your homepage or on your blog. You can create the sign up form here and use JavaScript to actually post it to your website. And then you can use automation to actually automate some marketing tasks that you have. There's gonna be automation templates available. So you can actually browse through and see the different uh, you know, goals that you may want to uh, have uh, you know, be done with you know, automation and then configure uh, this uh, particular element that we call within marketing automation and customize that to actually start getting some things actually done uh, automatically for you once you set them up once. So that's gonna be within marketing automation. You can browse through the different areas, like for example, welcome messages. If you'd like to use autoresponders, you can do that, or you can do it as an automation workflow. I'll briefly show you what it looks like inside of the editor. So marketing automation is made up the, of the conditions, actions, and filters. So you simply can uh, you know, edit them by clicking on an element and configuring the properties so that whenever someone signs up 
to a specific list. I can go ahead and send a particular message that I have available. So let's say it's a you know, draft that I have working on. Let's say this is a draft, I can choose yes. And then there's additional options you have like to actually see, okay, so did someone actually open this particular message? And if so, maybe I want to take some particular action that I have here. So we have lots of really great uh, specific help tutorials for setting up marketing automation workflows and customizing them, but they're really amazing ways to actually uh, be able to uh, set up really custom customer journeys uh, for your subscribers and then uh, tweak them within the properties. You can host webinars within GetResponse. And so this is you know, yet another cool tool for nurturing with your subscribers. You can create a webinar and actually host it right within your account. So there's lots of uh, amazing things that you can do when connecting with your audience and hosting a webinar. And so you'll do that right within GetResponse and then send the invitations to them this way. And a CRM pipeline. So if you've got kind of maybe some high ticket items or a sales team, you can actually create a, a customized sales pipeline to be able to keep track of this buyer's process and you know, assign account managers or sales representatives to, to specific deals that are gonna be coming in your account. So this is a really important aspect as well. And finally, if you'd like to start sending some traffic to your, to your website, to your auto funnel pages or to your landing pages, you can use uh, the Facebook ads feature that's rolling out and be able to set up a custom Facebook uh, advertising right within your GetResponse account and set up these targeted ads to help giving you, you know, opportunities to get some more traffic, to get some new audience and actually start building your email list as well. And so we've gone through all the aspects of the accounts. There's some really important places to start. And so I hope you feel you know, comfortable at actually starting out with your lists, importing your contacts, hopefully creating an auto funnel to help you start building your list and promoting your products, uploading your, uh, your products that you want to actually promote, send some email blasts uh, with an email marketing newsletters and uh, be able to you know, upload your images in your files that you want to use in your marketing materials and then start testing out more advanced features as you move along with automation, webinars, CRM, things like that. So it's a great place to get started.